Most of us would prefer to sip and savor good wine, not wheel and deal in it. But wine is fast becoming an increasingly sought-after alternative investment. So maybe I shouldn't have even opened it. After all, who knows how much it might be worth in three years, or even 30. This month, two auction houses, Christie's and Dobiaszowski, held wine auctions in Switzerland, and a new wine storage space, a kind of wine cellar meets bank, opened in Laupen. We visited Dobiaszowski in Bern, which sold all of the 1,000 bottles it was offering in auction, mostly Bordeaux and Burgundies, the most coveted wines worldwide. One of the highlights was a bottle of Romane Conti Grand Cru from 1986, estimated at 6,000 Swiss francs, but sold for 10,000. Let's say I would buy a bottle for, for 8,000, and I see this as an investment. Is there a certain time range or duration that I have to keep this investment in order for it to be profitable? I think it's the nature of every, every passion investment that it's a long-term investment. Uh, you might have a market chance to sell it very quickly, but usually you hold it and you wait for the market chance. When you go to a uh, passion investment, it's absolutely crucial that you make your homework. You have to educate yourself, you have to educate the big knowledge if you just buy randomly any wine, any watch, you will never have any profit. In every market, it's the blue chips, it's the 1% that makes the difference. So you as an auction house, you've been selling wine for a while already, but why is it important to not just offer art or watches, but to diversify? Um, there are so many fields that uh, have been traditional collection fields like antiquities, 19th century paintings, that they are just dying and disappearing. So for an auction house it's crucial to find other collectibles that uh, replace this. And collectibles like wine, watches is fantastic because you have a global market for it. If you have a Patek Philippe, you have buyers from China to Russia, from Switzerland to Norway. Everybody is interested. Same to the wine, it's a fantastic field to open the market internationally. So once you bought a decent bottle of wine, the question arises of where to store it. And I'm here with Nicolas Stempfli. Your family has been in the wine business since 1904. So I wonder why did you open a wine bank now? We found out that people do not have enough um, space for, for the storage of wine. So we wanted to give them the opportunity to store the wines really properly and in the perfect uh, climatized uh, cellar. The days of wine and roses and you. We uh, have the perfect temperature. It's between 14.5 and um, 16 degrees um, constantly. And also we have uh, 75 uh, to 85 degree uh, humidity. And um, it's actually a, a huge uh, Euro cave, a huge um, uh, wine storage um, fridge. The compoundings, they have from 70 bottles roughly to 1,500 bottles capacity. So a total of how many? 30,000 bottles. 30,000 bottles. Could be stored here. Yeah, here, yeah. Um, here we have uh, size M where we have space for roughly 240, 300 bottles. Okay. And um, here we have size XS. XS, so you have exactly. XS, S, M. M, L and XL. Okay, and how much would you pay for XS? So an XS, it's 150 francs per year. And the most expensive is the one for um, 1,500, 1,600 bottles for 900 francs per year. Which is behind you. Which is behind me, yes, which is free. You can actually let cases deliver here and we're going to put it in the locker or you can let it send. You can buy wine via us and we store it here directly. Um, you can sell wine via us. So actually we really wanted to have a, a really transactional um, kind of, of storage here. We can all combine that via an, an app that we, pro that we um, programmed. 
investing in wine seems to be a bit of a trend, um, but compared to other assets, it doesn't really doesn't pay a dividend. Uh, investors have to pay for its storage, um, and it requires some time until you can liquidate a collection of wine, which is maybe four or five months or so. So there are some disadvantages. Why still do it? Investing in wine uh, should be considered really as a, as a passion asset. So it is, um, it is one asset class that is uh, just not bonds or, or shares or um, real estate. So you should consider it um, as a passion asset. That's, that's the first thing. And then um, it is really important to know that it's very volatile uh, investing in wine. And um, uh, it should never be um, your primary um, investment. Why is it so volatile? It is volatile because um, uh, demands change quite quickly. Uh, scores of critics change, that's a uh, price driver. Um, different factor really changed the, 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 the price of a, of a bottle on, or a case of wine. wine. Over the past 10 years, the prices for fine wine have gone through some significant swings. Philippe Mazet, professor at the School of Hospitality in Lausanne, says that starting in mid-2009, for instance, prices increased thanks to new customers from China, as well as the beginning of the economic recovery, before the market corrected in mid-2011. As Mazet says, from a pure investment standpoint, fine wines retain the advantage of being only weakly correlated with stocks and therefore offer significant diversification potential. So if I want to invest in wine, and um, have some profit, when would it make sense to sell it again? So we consider um, three to seven years. And if it's a really collectible bottle, um, a really rare bottle, uh, you can still sell it in 20, 30 years. Uh, it, 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 um, it pays, uh, it gains uh, normally on value because it's, it's getting rare and rare uh, over the time because still, People still drink the wine, so... Is it still drinkable after 30 years? <laughs> yes, yes, there are wines that are really delicious. But you, of course you need to have um, the clientele um, um, and, and the, the clients really to, to enjoy those wines. And I think it's very important um, if you consider wine as an investment, then um, I think you, you as a person, you still should be interested in the wine itself. And, uh, and I think um, at the end, uh, uh, you should you should love the wines too, and um, and I think that's that's then going to be a really nice passion asset. So you mentioned in the beginning at least three to seven years. Um, why this time span? So actually, when uh, wines are getting released from the winery uh, in the in the first let's say two years, uh, the aromas, flavors, and um, uh, the brand uh, and and um, the image of the wine is maybe not formed 100%. So after a time of, let's say, three to seven years, you, you have more critic scores. Uh, the wine is quite, quite ready to go. Um, and, and so the bottle's getting rarer and rarer. And, and you see there, actually, if you can make profit out of the wine or not. Uh, and I think it's the most important time to see where um, the bottle goes, I mean, where the prices are going. What defines the price? The price of a wine um, is defined by uh, quality, of course. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, the taste, simply the taste, um, uh, the ripeness, um, the balance, the, the, the overall quality of the wine. And then you have price drivers like the brand, from whom is it produced, the chateau, the, the producer, the, um, uh, the quality, the storage quality, um, the labels, how nice the labels are. So if a label is like scratched, it loses a lot of value. Yeah, not a lot, but it's still losing a, a little bit of value because people that want to buy the bottle, they want to have pristine bottles. They want to have really nice bottles. So you mentioned quality, the ripeness. I'm just thinking now of um, the impact that maybe climate change has. Do you see an impact? Yes, it has an impact. Um, we see way higher um, degrees of alcohol than we saw um, 10 years ago, even. Um, it's shifting from 13 to now 15.5. Uh, 
So I need to drink less to feel something. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. And, um, and also, um, that's also a problem because the consumption is, uh, is going down from year to year and we have statistics from it. But the volume on the general market is actually, is actually growing. But what we see also is a shift from um, um, cheaper bottles to, to rather more expensive bottles of wine. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting shift. Can you comment that? I think that people, um, if they're drinking a bottle of wine in the evening or on the weekends, they rather take something quite good than um, just cheap plunk. And climate change, besides uh, having an impact on the alcohol degree, it also has an impact on story. Yes, exactly. So uh, what we see also is that, I mean, summers are getting longer and longer. And even in, in those in the old buildings, the cellars, they, they got heaten up, uh, which is not very good for storing the wines. So that was also one of the reasons why we, why we actually um, build up the, the cellar here. We're talking about passion investments, but there you can also have wine as a speculative investment. Speculative wines um, is a big topic. Um, some brands profit from very good critic scores or from a brand recognition that's worldwide known. Uh, Lafitte Rochard, for example, is quite a speculative wine. Um, and then you have uh, volatility on, on, on those prices. So. And how much is that specific Rothschild bottle? Uh, it's around 850, 750 to 850 francs. It depends on, on the market. And then how does it work? To whom do you sell it to? So we actually sell it on a very old school way. Uh, we sell it via email. Um, we, we also have a website where we list all the wines of our clients. So people worldwide can um, check the lists and if they find something interesting, they can order it online uh, or via email. And we send out some offers um, and uh, people react or they don't react. And if they don't react, the price is too high. It's very easy. And who buys these kind of bottles? In this case, in this particular case, uh, we have um, uh, people from, uh, from the Asian uh, region. Uh, we have people from... Um, from London, which is a big place of, um, of fine wine. It's a big marketplace of fine wines. Those are very specific market for brands that really work in these kind of markets. So it's less a bottle that you would see in your local wine bank? Uh, yeah, it's less a bottle that we would see here. Just to wrap it up, what kind of advice can you give to someone that wants to invest in wine? To um, invest in upcoming producers or in underrated producers, upcoming regions, um, underrated vintages. To invest in wine that you really like and to find out which wine you like, you need to taste it. For CNN Money Switzerland, I'm Tani König. Chin Chin.